You'll do great. I just started recording when you said that. <laughs> hey, uh, this is step two in our training modules for NDS Professional. And again, NDS hey, wait, I can't see your screen. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to see it. I'm showing screen. Hang on a second. Let me see. Boy. All right. So this is going to be step two of the training modules for NDS Professional. And again, NDS Professional, as you see down here, is a licensed um, CNCPS um, version of the model developed by Cornell University using the CNCPS equations. It's in the platform of the NDS Professional developed by the Rumen Group in, in Italy. And uh, for step two, what we'd like to do is just go through some real basics on how to set up your working group, how to start with uh, farms and, and building farms and building pins and building recipes inside there. So what we're going to do in the first module, we tried to get you familiar with the settings down here and some of this information and some of the utilities to set up and, and customize your NDS. In this module, what we'd like to do is go through and just explain to you what you see and how to get to really start working and building farms. So at the top of the screen up here, you'll see that the feed bank is the base feed bank, and we will explain the whole modules there and everything. But what we really need to do is to um, look at how we set up the, the, the feed bank we'll go over. The working group is a, is a group, a collection of farms, a collection of, of uh, farms, just a structural system that we can use to work on uh, keeping our farms organized. The price set is is showing Weber prices, just something I named. We can change those that name also, but we'll do that in another another module. The way that you describe your your um, your working group is to be able to go over this small icon here and click this. And then you'll be able to either customize your working group or create another working group. To start off, usually I tell people, hey, look, the best way to do it is to put all your farms into one working group. After you're comfortable with the platform, you can have an inactive working group if you want to move a herd that you're not working with or somebody sends you a herd to look at. You can keep that herd in an inactive working group. So I have several working groups, but again, to start off, you're, you're better off keeping everything in one working group, and then as you get familiar with the system, you can actually move farms amongst working groups as needed. But right now, I've created a demo working group. If I wanted to create a new working group, I could create a new one and just call it Kansas as... An example, Kansas example, and then what I would want to do is save this, but there's a small um, box here that says in setting up farm structure, and you really have to enable that or else you're going to be frustrated because you won't be able to build farms within your, your uh, working group. So I would go in there and save this, and then my Kansas example would appear here. And then I can close this area here, go up to the pull-out menu, and there would be my Kansas example. So you're, again, the working group is just a collection of farms that you're going to build barns inside the farms, which have the recipes inside the barn. So I'm probably just for simplicity going to go back to my demo here. 
and now that working group has been set up. I can set up several of them, but again, simplicity to start off with. And then inside a farm structure is where you create farms, you can create barns within a farm. Most of the demos that come out now have something in called a first herd template. And if you click on that, you'll see that inside the first herd template, we have a lactation barn and a non-lactation barn. And inside the lactation barn, you have a fresh pin, um, a heifer lactation pin, high cow pin, late lactation pins. You can see these actually have recipes in them. One for each of these, there's four high cow recipes here. And the non-lactating barn, I've created close up, far off, milk calf diet, replacement diet, and steer diet. And so what is, what is really important is once you go through this procedure or once you use the first herd template, you don't need to recreate this. But what you can do is you can actually go up to your, to your dem, demo farm or your, your first herd template, and I can either add a new barn, I can remove the whole farm, I can transfer this, but one of the features that we've added is this farm duplication. And so when I go to build my first farm, I might want to go and duplicate that. And so I won't have to rebuild all this farm structure in here. So my new farm might be Adam's Dairy. And then it asks for an ID code. And it's not specific. It's not um, very, the only importance it has in the fact that if I start importing and exporting farms to another user, that needs to be user specific. So I might call this AD for Adams Dairy and 123 as long as it's specific to that farm and I haven't used that ID code before. I can click this button which will duplicate the recipes, but I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and duplicate the farm structure without the recipes. And when I hit proceed, I'm going to duplicate the farm and it has created successfully Adam's Dairy down here. The same farm structure is down here. And then I can easily say, hey, this guy doesn't have a heifer pin, so I can remove that pin. And maybe he has no late lactation pin, so I can remove that pin. And now I have a lactation barn, fresh pin, high pin, non-lactation, and I'll just leave all these. The structure part of this is when it prints out, when you print a report, it wants to put the dairy name, the barn, and the pen, and then it'll include whatever definition that you have saved the ration under. But so what happens is, is that we are setting up the dairy, the barn, and these two have lactation cow definitions and the non-lactating has dries and non-lactating animals in there. You could actually go ahead and add a new pen of animals in the lactation barn, and we could put dry cows in here, but the print, when it prints off, it will say lactation barn dry cows, but I can put dry cows in the lactation barn if I wanted, the print off will just say Adams Dairy Lactation Barn Dry Cows, and it will have the dry cow definition. So it's not a rigid structure, but just for the accounting, you're better off to do it within the farm barn pin structure. So now I have created this, this dairy inside of my farm structure. Now, I can also 
build a farm by scratch and again you would hit this green plus and again I can build a new farm by by uh, by scratch so if I hit this here here would be I must have hit it twice but I can hit and I can start a new farm so the new farm might be um, um, Brad's dairy and then from here if I confirm this if I confirm this then here's Brad's dairy and then I can change this to lactation or milk cow barn and do that and then define my pin however I want to do it and so lactation uh, high pin and then go over here to the warning button and define that as a lactation cow so either way I do that, the demo or the first herd template is made so that you can easily replicate that and just delete it with a right mouse click. So when I go to Brad's Dairy, if I just click on Brad's Dairy, this comes up. I can put his information down in here. Here is where also if I wanted to use multi-component milk pricing, I think I need to go to statistics and choose on multi-component here and then go over to multi-component milk pricing. I can add the new component price for his region on fat, protein, premiums, deductions here. And, and that will give me uh, multi-component milk pricing on his farm. Also, there's another little button in here I should show you, but if I update the new components, that I'm putting in and I leave a check mark in here every farm in this working group that's using multi-component milk pricing will be updated so several different ways to make farms to start working with the internal farm structure here so now I've created two dairies I've created Adams dairy and Brad's dairy so I'm going to close out of here because that's all in the farm structure. And it says management related to the structure of the farm in the working group. It allows you to create farms, several barns and pins in there. But you can't start a recipe in there. This just builds farms, moves farms, changes farms. If I want to go create a recipe now, what I can do is I can go to the recipe area, click on recipe, and now I can go out of the demo and let's go to Adam's Dairy and if I click the blue globe by Adam's Dairy, it opens up all the pin structure. What's important to note here is that I'm showing the last six diets that I've done but I don't have anything in here now if I go up to the herd template and click on it you can see that I've got I'm showing the last six diets I've only got one diet in my fresh pin one in my heifer I'm showing the last four that I did from my high cow here and I've only got a few diets in here but if I go back to let's go to Adams Dairy and open it up and again I want to start a new diet so I would go to high cow pin right mouse click on it and then I would up make a new recipe from here and then from there it opens again the default page up here on the top screen now I'm in the main menu Here's the new recipe for Adam's Dairy, and it opens up to the animal input page. And the animal input page is the one that I have set up for the animal inputs that are constant on my computer. 
Um, again, you can change these in settings. I've chosen an 85 pound cow. I've chosen her to be 1385 with a 1475 mature body size. This is giving her an average daily gain of 1.46 pounds per day. This is critical to watch. We'll probably do a separate video just on setting the animal inputs up in CNCPS. But what we really want to do is show you that this area here um, is critically important to look at. And we can also go to the environment tab. And this is set at thermal neutral right now. So I can change the temperatures for today, uh, night temperature 75. And you can see that I'm into a little bit of heat stress already. I can go into activity. I can set up the activity in the pull down menu for a small freestall barn. When I set up this activity, the management will be active to me, but also there's some graph functions in here we can play with and have a uh, demonstration module on this separately. But the inputs for this animal, this lactating cow that we set up, it's critical for the growth of the animal, for the, for the energy balance, protein and energy balance that is defined on the output page. This input page is extremely important here. We'll probably do a separate um, comp, uh, video tutorial on that already. But as we go through here, then you're into the animal inputs under the new recipe. And I will probably go into recipe now. And here is a micro shot of what my animal is, 100 days in milk, 85 pounds of milk with a 3.7 and a 3.1. Now, when I click on, this is my ingredient area here. If I click on the black plus box, it allows me to add feeds using, again, Microsoft Access, which looks at all of my feeds at one time. You can see that I've imported some from Dairyland Labs here. This says Dairyland Labs right over here. If I hover over the icon, which is Dairyland Labs, a uh, breakdown of that forage comes up. Here's a Cumberland Valley Analytical Labs. And if I want to, I can click on CNCPS, which pulls the Cornell Feed Library in. And then I can go to the search engine here and just type in corn silage. And I can pick up a corn silage that I want. And I'm just going to go rapidly and, and pick up some feeds in here just for our demonstration. I'm going to pick up some corn. I'm going to go here and sweep clean and type in alfalfa. I'm going to pick up an alfalfa hay here like that. I may even pick up some silage here, haylage. And you can see the feeds loading over here in the upper right. So I might sweep clean and type in corn space G and pick up some uh, corn grain fine here. Um, might do some corn, eth oops, I think that's listed as ethanol. So I might pick up some ethanol distillers, sweep this clean, type in soybean, pick up some soy hulls and some soybean meal. Sweep that clean and type in limestone. So I can type in and using everything out of the CNCPS feed library, I can pull things up here and keep adding things back and forth. So I might add a few more feeds here. Go ahead and put some fuzzy cotton seed in. And what else might I need? I might need a MinVit, and so I might use the blank MinVit from the CNCPS feed library. If I want to pull in some feeds from the Rumen feed library, I might want to use a product like Soy Best. Here's some Soy Best, and maybe there's some Soy Plus. 
I may put both of those now. Those are from the commercial feed library. You can see they have the the company's names right behind them. So I'm just going to go ahead and proceed from there. And it's thinking and it's loaded my feeds in here. So now I can add feeds. I'm just going to go ahead and, and create some feeds in here real quick and uh, hopefully come up with a pretty reasonable representation of a diet and then I think for the demonstration is to show that um, what I'm trying to do is come up with with a um, a diet that might be able to save. So I've got 53 pounds of intake. I didn't put any cost in here, but I've got 75 pounds of milk and 80 pounds on ME and MP milk here. Here's the breakdown or the analysis of this diet. Looks like quite a bit of PENDF and my forage amounts pretty high here. Anyway, just looking at the numbers um, of, of how this is looking, then I can save this, save this diet and do a save as, and then the new recipe, what's important about using this is probably call it Adam's Dairy, AD for Adam's Dairy, and this is a high cow ration, and then I would put the date on it, 214, uh, 6, 11, and then I would make the description the same as the personal name. It just works better when I print that out. And then I can save this recipe, and now it's a saved file. I'm using the external file structure, so what I'm doing is I'm saving this in an external file that has the NDS session file, Adams Dairy Lactation Barn High Cow. And that's the next thing I want to show you before we quit here, is just to show you where this is saving and how it saves. So again, here's my diet I've created. If I open another tab, I can peek back and look at my file structure in here now close that and look at Adam's Dairy and here is Adam's Dairy High Cow 2014 611 it's got a timestamp on here um, international of 154007 so that's uh, 340 so again and we did this on 611 2014 and so it's in that barn. Now, what I'd like to show you real quick is we've we've built that that uh, diet in here, and so that's an internal. So we put it in our farm structure, and inside Adam's Dairy. You can see that one recipe is in that high cow pin, and that is the recipe we built. So if we look at the main screen, I have this external file box open. And we've got a module that talks about this. But basically, in the database section, we have clicked on this in enabling handling session files. And that's what allows us to keep an internal copy of the farm, the recipe, and everything internally. But it also opens up an external system that makes an external uh, copy of your recipe. And it puts it in my documents. So when you load NDS onto your computer, you will have this NDS session file folder created under my documents on your C drive in your computer. And if you set that as the default 
folder, then every when you create farms internally in that farm structure system, there's a small box here that says managing pathways. And what this does is it creates in that folder in the NDS session files, it creates those herds in there. So it does it alphabetically. And so if I go to Adams, I believe, hopefully it's right here. Here's Adams theory, and it created it. The first couple times you may have to click this update folders. And what that does is it copies that farm structure from internally and puts it in my documents NDS session files. So if I click the update file folders, it will go ahead and copy that or refresh that. After you do it once or twice, it seems to automatically know to do that, but you may need to do that the first time. So now, if I go to my documents, if I go to NDS session folders, which is in my documents under my C drive, it creates the NDS session file, and there's Adam's theory, the one we just made. So if I open Adam's theory and I go into the lactation barn and the high cow pen, here is the diet, an external copy. We already saw the internal copy, but we have an external copy right here listed from 6-11-2014. If I want to email this to my colleague, they can open this up in the external file structure without having to put it on their computer and look at this recipe in NDS. They could make changes to it, save it in their external folder, and send it back to me. So that's an easy way of, of keeping external copies of this, this information. Um, so you have an internal copy and an external copy automatically. And so let me just show you that one more time. So here's my, here's my recipe, and I'm going to change this to, to manipulate this just a little bit. I'm going to feed two pounds of haylage, and I'm going to go up to 11 pounds of ground corn, just as my example. And then I may save as again, and I may just change this to tomorrow's date delete this, go back here and click on enter here. And I can actually save in another pin if I want to. But what I want to do is go ahead and just save it for right now. The internal copy is being saved and it's prompting me that it's saving the external file in the NDS session folder, Adams Dairy Lactation Barn high pin. I can scroll down here if I want. Oops, just passed it by. There it is right there. But it's already knowing that that's where it's saving that. So that is saved in those internal and external. Again, we can go look here, go to recipes, and in Adam's theory, We'll have both of them here. Here they are, the two of them with the latest one being on top. And the external copy will be in that external file. Now, one other thing I want to show you before we quit here is that in that settings, now that I have that database tab set up with the external and the root folder set as the default, if my report section, if my folder to save my reports is in the same final folder location, which is that NDS session files, then the real good part of this is that when I create a report, and again, when we will do another module on reports, but say I'm going to save a report, and I want to save my consultant report, 
of this diet, which is basically showing summary, CNC, PS, and everything. Now it's showing me that I've got a one a two page report up here and so I may scrunch this thing together just to make it a one page report and I'm going to go ahead and save this report under utilities create a file and I'm going to create a PDF report now it's going to save it in that same external file structure which is my documents NDS session file Adams lactation high pin I can change anything I want here but I'm just going to go ahead and save it right now and so it usually opens up what it will look like in a PDF format so again if I go look at that folder again here is those two diets we saved and here is the NDS PDF report from that file that we automatically saved in his file. And we can do that with just a click of the mouse. And so that's what is um, exciting about using that external file structure. So again, module two, what we're trying to do is just show you how to use on the from the main page, set up your working group, and you the, the program usually comes, it's, it's his uh, first NDS working group, but you can customize that, change the name, make sure that the working group is enabled with that small box here, setting up the farm structure, and then from there, you can create farms in farm structure and build your recipes in the recipe tab. The external file structure, is a great feature to use, time saver, and again, I think that's what we just wanted to show you in the step two of our of our tutorial set. Rachel, was there anything I forgot or anything needs further explanation? Uh, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. I think you covered it all. Okay. That'll be step two, and, and uh, hopefully that informative, no. and you can follow that. Okay, thanks.